They're known as the Green Oscars and the Ashton Awards are among the most prestigious in the environmental world. A packed audience at London's historic Royal Geographic Society was there to see the prizes presented by the UK's Minister for Climate Change, Gregory Barker. Each of tonight's finalists have met the defining challenge of our age, the challenge of delivering clean, sustainable energy. Next is the International Award for Avoided Deforestation, supported by the Waterloo Foundation. It goes to an organisation giving mountain communities in Pakistan new skills, thriving micro-enterprises and warmer homes. It is the Aga Khan Planning and Building Service. The award was accepted by Princess Zara Aga Khan for Bassett, the building and construction improvement programme of AKPBS. Basif was inspired by His Highness the Aga Khan's conviction that, as part of a continuum of development efforts ranging from education to infrastructure, quote, a proper home can provide the bridge across that terrible gulf between poverty and a better future. We hope that this initiative will help lift thousands of families out of the vicious cycle of poverty. We share your vision of better lives, improved habitats, and a green environment. The remote mountains of northern Pakistan. Winters are harsh here. Deforestation is a serious problem. People in the Hindu Kush and Karakoram mountains combat the bitter winters by burning large amounts of firewood for heating and for cooking. But that leads to respiratory and eye diseases in the home and to deforestation in the environment. Basip has come up with more than 40 products to help. One of the most important is a fuel-efficient stove with chimneys to remove smoke and hatch windows to replace the traditional hole in the roof. There used to be a lot of smoke and because of that we had sore eyes, aching chests and our clothes were covered with soot. We had to warm water in a pot using even more firewood. But now water is warmed in the barrel for dishes, laundry, basing, for everything. And the programme is already saving 100 tonnes of wood a year and preventing around 160 tonnes of CO2 emissions annually. It saves families huge amounts of work, they say, that has halved the quantities of wood they use. There's a shortage of wood in these parts, which is why it would normally take around three months to collect enough fuel to last the winter. Now the wood that is collected in 15 to 20 days is enough to keep the house warm and heat water. The energy-saving products are built by local carpenters and metal workers. Basip invited me for training, so I went to the town for a week. Then I came back here and started work. I began training others, around 25 people, and they're now working here too. I also earned more money from my machinery, which Basip also helped me to install. So now I have both good machines and several employees. I used to earn 150 to 200 rupees a day. Now I earn a thousand. This clean, labour-saving technology has transformed women's lives, helped by local role models like Bibi Safina. She began as a volunteer and now earns an income from promoting the products. I get 10% commission from every sale. Gradually I've gained more and more business experience. Now I've also a business of my own, so my standard of living is really good now. The whole notion is to ensure that there's enough trained entrepreneurs within the communities so that they are able to meet the ongoing demand and make it a market-based model that these entrepreneurs make a good business out of it. So it's a business model for continuity and for sustainability. The project has been hailed by the UN as a model which can be successfully replicated elsewhere. Basip took it to Tata, a coastal district of Sindh, in 2002, and there are plans to expand to Afghanistan and Tajikistan. It's already helped at least 240,000 people, and as Princess Zara told her London audience, it has multiple benefits. I think building and planning is one of the very key elements because it ties together urban development 
rural development and health development. In that sense, it's one of the cornerstones of environmental health and the BASIP program is a very good example of how environmental health can drastically be improved with some very small and cost-effective measures.